Something, please. Fantastic. And Rage, could you say something, please? Something, please. That is absolutely perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Look at this layout. Can we just take a second to appreciate this layout? All right, this took me so long. You have no idea how long it took to get this layout looking like this, all right? I mean, you might be thinking, ooh, that's a, that's a sexy forest. Well, you know what? Boom, now we're in a dungeon. Look at that. It's all professional level stuff. Someone's let charge well. the cameras in the wrong place. All right, guys. Okay, here's how it's gonna go. First of all, welcome to the stream. It's lovely to have you all with us. I've got two gorgeous people with me right now. I've got, you know, I've got you on the wrong tabs. Callum, you're currently marked as Rage. Rage, <laughs> you're marked as Callum. We can't be too professional, can we? Okay. That's literally a last minute fix that Callum. I just did. It's fine. I'm just going to, don't worry. I'm not even going to use the mouse. I'm just going to hold the right key on the, uh, on the little arrows and slowly shift Callum over here. It's fine. Then I'll Perfect. shift Rage over there. Callum, would you please introduce yourself to the lovely people? Most people know who you are, but why don't you give a little intro? I think your intro is the best Dirt Insomnia. I am Callum, destroyer of metaverses, slayer of Earth 2, and uh, somehow a full-time content creator. Somehow. So, mm -hmm. somehow. That is very true. Somehow you've made it in the world of YouTube. So what's the plan for today? The plan for today... Rage, why don't you... Everyone knows who you are, Rage. Everyone's seen you on stage, but why don't you introduce who you are as well? Sure. Um... I can't have gone out, but just seeing you, like, holding the arrow key, moving me over to the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just slowly sh It's not professional. Perfect. I love it. Um, hello, my name is Rage Ali, or Rage. Um, Josh gave me a brilliant intro on stage at Insomnia, which was the red-headed lady from Azeroth? The red-headed darling of Azeroth. That's who you are. Yes, I love it. I'm a World of Warcraft player, um, first and foremost, but lover of MMORPGs, which is why I found Josh Strife which I feel like the majority of you guys found him as well through MMORPGs. And uh, yeah, I have red hair and I am eating a twister lolly and I'm very glad that Josh hasn't green screened me out because I feel like a green lolly with green screen, Callum would have a lot of fun after this stream. Guys, I already planned to. Yeah, Rage right now is eating a twister lolly with a green screen behind her, okay? You want to take shots of this, you want to green screen it, you want to Photoshop it, you go for it. You know, I know exactly who you are. I know what you're going to do. Let's just oh, add in a chat box. Oh, look at this. Now, now you guys have got a little bit of chat. This is good. So what this is, basically, this is session zero, should I say. This is totally session zero. We are going to be doing a live action, interactive Dungeons & Dragons style game. But I need to know what you guys want from this. First, it's it's going to be a case of working out, you know, what kind of stuff do you want? What kind of stuff do you not want? What have you seen before that you don't want to see again? What kind of D&D &D things do you think would be fun to see live? Look, we've even got chat going on just there. Yeah, it's suggestive. People are like, oh boy, what do we want? Well, I don't know if any of you guys can see, but I've got the, the wheel in, in the bottom right-hand corner. There's a little wheel just here. Okay, you see the wheel? Right, let me... Let me see if I can do this. You guys ready for the wheel? Watch me spin the wheel. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, nice. It's a beautiful bit of a wheel spin. And oh, we're in a forest. My see? entire chat are asking why Josh is frozen. So, Josh's cam isn't working on Discord because of something he did in OBS. So I've put a stand in, which is just the first image I found of Josh. So he's not frozen. I mean, he is. Yes, I may have messed that up. That is entirely my fault. Okay, completely my fault. Um, Callum is doing the best he can with what he's got. Uh, people are asking in the chat, how's the Insomnia event? Oh my god, it was absolutely amazing. Rage, why don't you fill us in? How did Insomnia mm. go for you? Insomnia was um, amazing. It always is. I'm, a, I'm an Insomnia rat, 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 bleh, vet. Good start, Rage. It's smooth sailing from here on out. <laughs> yeah, it's a good job there's not many people here, eh? <laughs> um, I'm a, an insomnia veteran, so I've done insomnia a lot of times. Um, but it's always really nice to bring people who you know who's never been to insomnia before to insomnia for the first time. And that's what I had today, but like times three. Because not only had Josh never been to Insomnia, not only had Callum not been to Insomnia before, we also had Spiffing Brit, who's never been to Insomnia yes. before. Yes, absolute gentleman. So, 
Yeah, there were so many people who'd never been to Insomni before, and I was like, welcome to my baby! Like, this is where I hang out two times a year. Uh, so it was really, really good. And we got to unleash our own baby, which was Britical Roll, soon to be renamed, potentially. Potentially so renamed can... due to legal yeah. issues. I mean, I think... I think I could probably take Matt Mercer in a fight, but I don't think that's how the law settles these things. Like if, <laughs> if, yeah, if we were both dragged in, I would demand trial by combat, but I think we're kind of past that. Someone in the chat has just said, so is this a serious stream? No clips to be had today. No, 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 there, there will be clips. There will be clips. This is, this is session zero of a Dungeons & Dragons game, which is where I get to discuss with you guys what you want. You get to tell me what you want from a Dungeons & Dragons game, and we get to talk to the amazing players, Rage and Callum. But it's all about preparation. Sessions at Britical Roll was an improv D&D game. We don't worry too much about the numbers or the stats. It's more about the adventure and the fun and the silly kind of stuff. So this is a planning session, but you're involved. It's also just a general chat between myself, Rage, and Callum. Callum, it was indeed your first uh, insomnia as well. We, we spoke about this on the Tangent Tavern a few days ago. But why don't you fill in the lovely people with how you found it? I absolutely loved it. So I had pretty high expectations of it anyway, but they were blown away. Like, it was, it's the best con that I've ever been to, hands down. Aww. And getting Fair. to meet all of you guys, just cherry on the top. Yeah, that is exactly what we want to hear. Now, for those of you watching on my stream... We've got a couple of things that are going to make this more D&D. First of all, I've got a dice overlay. And if you guys can see this right now, but the if dice I... dice overlay's cool. It is. I'm, I'm happy with it. If we load up and we go to the interact, and then I, I reset the dice overlay, you'll see some actual dice on the screen right now. And what I can do is I can click how many I want to roll. So for rolling, say, five D20s, we just add those, and then we... We roll them like that. They roll on the screen. Then it even adds it up for you on the screen. So we've rolled 62 in five D20s. That's, that's not great, but... That's the kind of uh, of stuff that we're going for. So we're going to have dice overlays as well. We've got the wheel in the corner. The wheel in the corner, by the way, is going to be what I call the wheel of enemies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like goblins, skeletons, animated armor, dragons. And the more dangerous enemies will be much smaller segments of the wheel. And the easier to kill enemies, the goblins and the animated arm and stuff, there'll be huge segments of the wheel. So when we walk into a room, we will discover what's in the room. And I will find a way to set it up so channel points get to spin the wheel. Which means the more people are watching, the harder the game is going to be for oh, the no. players. See? Mm. How do you guys feel about that, Rage? I mean, Rage and Cal don't know any of this. This, this is as new to them as it is to you. Rage, how do you feel about players making the game harder for you? This will be interesting. All you told us was that you were struggling to get a green screen set up. So this yeah. is a bit. This is a bit more, Josh. This is a bit more. Yeah. Um, it should be fun. Yeah, it should be really fun. I just yeah. hope that chat will be nice they to won't. us. They won't be. No. They'll yeah, hate you. No. Okay. No. They That's will hate fine. you so much. Now, I have got a total party kill every session. If it doesn't start with a Tarask or a dragon, has it really started? Now, <laughs> I've got lots of different background images to put up. We've got forests, we've got dungeons, we've got taverns, we've got swamps, we've got mountains, all that kind of stuff. I need to change the wheel of enemies to actually feature a load of enemies. Uh, Billy Trix will be joining us for the actual sessions, but she isn't here for this one because Billy has... Um, confluenza, we ended up calling it, which is just the con flu. We're all feeling it. Rage, are you are you feeling a little bit ill after the after the sessions? Not COVID because we checked, but how are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm actually fine. I think I gave all of my con flu to Billy. I mean, yes. I did spend the majority of my time with her, so she's probably taking my fair share of it. <laughs> she was like the sacrificial lamb, wasn't she? Yeah, I we fed just... her a lot of Jaeger bombs, which probably lowered her immune system. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the chat right remind now. me about that. It's like, Bill go open wide. <laughs> Mummy says open. <laughs> we should well, just warn you. First clip. Rage has had some drinks before this session, which might even be a thing that you know becomes becomes standard. But Callum, you haven't been drinking. I will drink before a session. You know what? It's going to be silly and funny and random. There'll be lots of polls, by the way. I will do polls on stream for: Are we inside? Are we outside? Are we good guys? Are we bad guys? But here's something I want to discuss about Dungeons & Dragons. 
I know that a lot of people talk about doing campaigns. You know, the party start level one, they finish level 20. It takes years or you know months to get there. I want to do it a little bit differently. I want to do kind of episodic D&D, which means if you miss the first 10 episodes, but you sit down to watch the 11th, that's fine. You've, you, you're still going to get it. There's an overarching plot, but you can just catch episodes as and when you can. Kind of like Star Trek. You know, you don't need to have yeah. watched it from episode one to sit down and still just get it. Cal, how do you feel about that? I think that sounds great. It works out well for the viewers and it works out well for the players as well. Because if a player's away mm. or ill, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of messes up the whole thing. So I think doing like episodic mm. um, campaigns is actually a really good idea. Mm. Yeah, someone in the chat just said it's more like a, a series of interconnected one shots. So what yeah. happens in episode one will affect episode, you know, 10. But if you watch episode 10 without watching episode one, that's fine. It's not going to be a problem. Um, Rage, how do you feel about that? Mm, I think that's a good way to do it because not everyone can always make streams. So that'll be that'll be awesome. Plus, it also means that you can mix and match guests, right? Very Absolutely. True. We'll be able to have guests on. We'll be able to have um, you know, special guests come and join us as like one-shot characters. Now, Rage, Callum, and Billy will be playing consistent characters across everyone. It's almost like, you know the TV show Supernatural? You know how sometimes it's just like a monster of the week, but the aim is still kill big bad, find dad, that kind of thing. It's going to be like that, but for D&D. &D. It's going to be consistent characters with a single overarching plot... But every week will be a different kind of adventure to go on. That kind of thing. I, th I think that'll work. It'll work really well. Now, oh, Rage, yeah, why well. don't you talk to us about the kind of Dungeons & Dragons that you want to play? Are you looking for more uh, combat? Are we looking for more interaction? Are we looking for more riddles? What do we want? I really like opportunity to roleplay, uh, believe it or not. I love and making funny scenarios so any any chance that you can um it's funny because my old dm is actually in my my stream chat right now and he's he's very upset with me apparently because we're doing a new hey, campaign no it's okay it's oh not a God. campaign it's a series of interconnected one shots bring him on as a guest there you go i would love to there you go jordan um he took us to buy some supplies once so we went into a shop and I was playing a character called Lillian, and she was very mischievous, very high energy, and she loved stealing. She was a kleptomaniac. Okay. So what was supposed to be just a buy the supplies before the boss fight encounter mm -hmm. turned into me role play flirting with the with the innkeeper so that we could steal some stuff on the side, getting caught, and then having to fight our way out, and then getting thrown out by the village guards. So, that would be cool. <laughs> okay, so we're going to lots of role play. I will voice every NPC. I will try my absolute best to do a different voice for every NPC. If they all end up Irish or Scottish, I apologise. That's just how NPCs tend to go. It's <laughs> just what happens. Every shopkeeper is, for some reason, from Ireland. It's a known fact. It is. It's true. I will do every enemy. I'll do every NPC. I'll try and make up all the interconnections, all that kind of stuff. Callum, what kind of game are yes. you looking for? I want to go on some epic adventures tied in with some absolute nonsense. Epic adventures combined with nonsense. I yeah, can I, do I that. I want to slay a mega dragon. That's at, surprising. Amazingly, I don't know how, but that was session one. That oh. might even happen right now. We might even just do a little bit of a little bit of a test session for you guys. Someone in the chat just says, Callum will fist even more enemies. Callum, are oh. you ready to fist your way across the land? I'm not sure if my uh, my character's built for that, but um, there will definitely be some other instruments of choice. Uh, Excellent. Put it what kind of character are you going to play? Are you still playing a monkey? Are you still playing Brother Callum? No, I am playing a bard. Ooh, a bard. Okay, a little bit of a bard. What exactly. kind? Why don't you tell us about your bardic history? So um, my bard is called Donovan. He is, a, well, he is now a musical bard, but before that he was just banned from every pub, so a different kind of bard. <laughs> um, and other than that, he's a bit of a mystery. You, you might find out more about him as we go on. Are we going to discover Donovan's history as, as we play his shady past? 
Yes, he's got a very shady past. Like a true bard, are you going to flirt your way across the land? That's the plan, yeah. I'm going to romance everybody possible. Including the um, Mega Dragon. That's how you take it down. Including the Mega Dragon, Are you yes. just going to recreate Shrek? Are you effectively playing Donkey? Uh, yeah, actually. Now that I think about it, the, the character I've got planned is pretty much Donkey. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Annoying, so, but you keep him around for the comedy value. Yeah, you keep <laughs> him around. Brilliant. So you're just going to be romancing a dragon. Rage, does your character... What's your character's name again? Are we going to stick with Rage the Barbarian? I think for continuity, potentially, it'd also be incredibly easy for people to follow as well if I was called Rage. Absolutely, because I know that you, you know, when you only have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And I know that you like just smacking things with big hammers, don't you? I do, yes. I like smashing things. So, yeah, I'd like to keep Rage, the barbarian, Mm -hmm. uh, two brain cells, uh, easy for me to play. Um, And she, I mean, she's got a bit of an issue where she's not really that confident and she's not really that fearsome so she needs a little bit of training potentially some like some words of wisdom from the bard if the bard has any words of wisdom yeah so rage the barbarian asks callum i know that your bard has a name is it donovan i'm going to possibly just say callum just because it's easier for the viewers to follow with the name on it Callum, you're you're bard. You've been across the land. You've met people. You've spoken to scholars. You've drank with kings. What do you think is the the life lesson that you want to share with Rage? What words of wisdom do you have for us? Uh, music over you know over a good pint will bring everybody together. Not necessarily in the best way, but there will always be some sort of outcome that you don't expect. So you're, that would be my advice. You're, I you're, mean, do it or don't do it. That's on you. But um, hang on, no, stop. Your ageless wisdom is: yeah, music and drinking may make something happen. Either do it or don't. It's up to you. Yeah, I mean, like if you if you don't have music over a drink, nothing's going to happen, right? But if you do, <laughs> the outcome's either going to be horrific or fantastic. There's never going to be an in between. You sound like the most wishy-washy bard. Like, <laughs> you know when you're reading like a horoscope and it's like something yeah. will happen today. You will eat tomorrow, yeah. Is that going to be your thing? You're going to try and give the most generic sounding advice to anyone you meet and hope that it's really specific? Absolutely. Fantastic. I like that. This is the best kind of bard. I can see we have a couple of people in the chat. Kiwo, good evening to you. Hopefully you guys are having a lovely time. So, yeah, Callum's going to max out Charisma, Rage is going to smack things with a giant hammer, but the way this adventure goes is mostly based on you. I've got the little wheel in the corner, the forest and the castle, that's going to be changed to have lots of enemies on it, and for anyone who's just joined, check this out. I've even got a little dice rolling app that I can interact with, and I can it is look, cool. I can click on every dice and then just click throw, and it rolls dice on the screen and then adds them all up for me. How cool is that? I like that. So you know that I'm not lying about dice rolls. If I need to just roll a single d20 as a DM, boom. Natural 20. What a perfect time to roll a natural 20. The future is now. No more cheating. No that was more the cheating. One request that I saw from everybody. How do we know that you're not cheating your dice rolls? And I was like, don't worry. Don't There's worry. A plan for that. We'll get a couple of dice. We'll throw them around. You guys will always, always know. The result of the dice roll. We're going to use lots of polls to work out where we are or where we aren't. Let's just give this a an example, shall we? So where should we start? Think of a location. Let's think. Let's think of a location. Callum, can you give me give me a fantastical location? A fantastical magical location. A rail cart system underground. Underground Ooh. rail cart. So are we talking like an underground mine, underground dwarven mine kind of thing? Yeah, a dwarven mine. Let's that, do it. That's pretty cool. Rage, can you give me another another sexy location? The cellar of an inn. Cellar of inn. I like it. And you know what's going to happen? There's going to be a vote on stream right now. You've got one minute. Get your votes in. Are oh. we playing in an underground rail cart? Or are we playing in the cellar of an inn? There is a vote happening right now on the stream. Every choice that I can give you guys as viewers, I'm going to give you. And don't 50-50 this. My, do you guys know what my chat have a habit of doing? 
<laughs> I've seen them try to balance out the votes perfectly on everything. Yeah, they have a habit mm-hmm. of... I don't know how. Like, It's like watching an ant colony work together. Every single individual ant has no idea what's going on, but as a colony, they just seem to be able to mess everything up. But you're not just messing me up anymore, guys. Now you're messing Callum and Rage up. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Stop it. Oh, it's 50-50. Okay, right, it's literally 50-50. It's, it's like, oh, no. it's 125 to 125. <laughs> you're, ru- you're ruining D&D. You've, I'm, I'm going to stop. I will turn this game around. <laughs> we will go home. Oh, oh no. my God. Okay, so 131 people voted for Seller and 130 people <laughs> voted for the Underground Rail Cart. Literally one vote in it. So the seller of the inn, the seller of the inn, the inn's busy. You can hear the patrons above you walking around. Callum, are you meant to be here? Something tells me I'm not because I am hiding. You are hiding in the cellar of an inn. Rage, can you remember how we got here? Yes. So there was... It was five minutes past midnight, if I recall correctly. By the way that the sun, or the lack of, was shining on the floor. You're in the cellar. (laughs) I'm leading up to it. (laughs) There was a white-haired night elf outside of the Goldshire Inn. Of the inn, not the Goldshire Inn, of the inn, of the inn. And they were like, hey, we have some moonshine downstairs. And so we were like, okay. So we hobbled through and we moved past this kitchen guard, I think. Callum, do you remember what was his kitchen guard doing? Do I think he was wondering why the sun was shining at five past midnight. <laughs> if it, no, if I remember correctly, he was fucking weird. A... <laughs> that big orb normally goes away when it gets cold. Guess it's staying. It, I, I believe he was fetching me a new point because I just dropped my flute in the previous one. <laughs> yes, there you go. And uh, yeah, I went. I went down to the cellar to get this moonshine from the white head night elf. So, Cal, you were in the midnight bar while the sun was shining, yes. dro- dipping your flute. That's not a euphemism. He was literally dipping his flute in the pint. What? What were you? Pl- why was the flute involved, Cal? What? Who were you trying to serenade? Right. Okay. So I wasn't trying to serenade anyone. These new paper straws are just awful. So they were falling <laughs> apart, and I just went with the flute, and um, it kind of went a bit too far. Yeah. In, and I, I wasn't fishing that back out. Yeah. The re- the, the plastic <laughs> reuse in this fantastical magical land is just. Oh my god! It's, it's, it got out of control. It is the king's latest decree was everything must be paper straws, and you rebelled. If you would you have to cover every like hole on the flute to use it as a straw? Yes, and uh, they weren't too happy because I missed a hole, so I basically just sprayed my pint across the entire inn. Right. So hang on, let me just paint a picture for a second. Right. You sat at the bar. You get served yes. a pint. You pull out mm-hmm. your flute. You dip it mm-hmm. into the pint. You cover every hole but one. You yes. powerfully suck. And what this causes is one of the holes just sprays. But you must have t- turned to, to cover the whole bar. Were you like a sprinkler system? No, so I did try to cover with my pinky. So I'm holding the glass with one hand and I'm trying to cover every hole on the flute with the other. And the last hole I just semi covered. And. You know, oh, like, like when you you're... put your thumb over the end of a hose pipe. Yeah, and it went everywhere. And then me trying to cover the hole more just made it worse. It just. People weren't happy. Let's uh, let's put it that way. Did it also make a note at the same time? Did like did it make a noise? Yeah, I got a good D sharp out of it. Brilliant, because that's dominance. You've established dominance right there. So you walked up and you sprayed the bar by using the flute as a as an attempted straw. Rage, you went down the stairs with this white haired elf to try some moonshine. Cal, mm-hmm. did you run after her because the bar looked very angry after you sprayed them with ale? Yeah, so I, I walked in with rage, so I very quickly went downstairs with her when I saw the look and beer on everyone's face. Someone in the chat has said, if he tilted the flute at a 45 degree angle, would the water just suck itself up? And then someone else put, is that how physics works? Guys, if you're expecting accurate physics, you're in the wrong stream. Uh, okay? A self-siphoning flute drink. This is D&D. The rule of cool is going to apply. Or in Callum's case, the rule of funny. 
So if it's going to be funny and get him punched, that's what we're going to go with. So, Cal, you ran down after Rage into the cellar. Yep, slipping all over the beer, you know, like ice skating down. Slipping over the beer because, Rage, you were only at the bottom of the steps with the white-haired elf. As Callum, you came tumbling down, didn't you? I did, yeah. Did you crash into the white-haired elf? Let's roll a dice and see if you did. Now, when we roll a dice, I will always roll for the game, for the enemies, and for the environment. And Callum and Rage will be able to roll for kind of themselves and stuff like that. And we'll have to trust their roles. They're not going to lie. I trust them. Mine's on screen anyway. Is yours on screen? Yeah. Okay, you know what, Cal? Uh, I will roll, roll, a D20, then. roll a d20 to see how nimble you were. I'll roll a d20 to see how nimble the elf was. And okay. uh, we'll see who, who wins. If you win the roll, nothing bad happens. If I win the roll, bad things happen. Six. Six. Oh. And you rolled a d20. It's definitely a d20 because I can see the 20 right next to it. Ten. Oh. oh dear. Cal, you run down these steps. You are slipping everywhere. Your flute is dripping with beer. Not a euphemism. That happened. Your, f- your foot flies up off the wooden steps, head over arse, tumbling down. The white-haired elf majestically turns. Almost everything white-haired elves do is in slow motion. The hair flicks back. He looks up and sees a bard just roly polying toward him down the stairs. You crash together and knock him onto the floor. Can you, you sit up. You see this this white-haired elf, and what's the first thing you say to them? Uh, but please forgive me. Uh, got my flute a bit wet. Uh, <laughs> just took a tumble. Uh, I'm sorry if I've inconvenienced you in any way. The elf does not realise that was not a euphemism, so is now <laughs> even more scared. Rage, what would you like to say to this elf that's promised you moonshine? I apologise for my friend. I have absolutely no idea what he's doing. Um, do you need any help? You you look a little bit hurt. Can I... Can, and I begin to just pick pick him up slowly with, like... He, I mean, he doesn't weigh a lot, so... You pick the up. elf up slowly. Mm. Rage, have you been drinking before this? Have you maybe had one or two? <laughs> a little bit hence why i was so excited about the moonshine excellent well you know you, you pick him up slowly in your mind you're being nice and careful and gentle but why don't you roll a d20 to see exactly how gently and carefully you you pick this pick this elf up because Aww. if if you maybe pick him up a little bit forcefully he's frail he's oh, not no. the not the toughest not the strongest Ooh. Let's see how how strong you are compared to how strong he is. I got a nineteen. That's not good. Okay, let's uh, let's, let's throw this d twenty here. He ripped his arm off. Seventeen. <laughs> so thankfully, he is still pretty tough. You pick him up quite powerfully. You're almost dislocating his shoulder as you kind of rip him to the up to stand on his own two feet again. He's been kind of manhandled around a bit, and he he looks at you. And can you remember the accent that this elf had, Rage? Uh, pretty sure it was from Croydon. Thanks. I mean, I'm sure we all know what a Croydon accent sounds like, but why don't you tell me what you think one sounds like and I'll tell you if you're right. Okay. <laughs> this is what the, the this is what it would sound like if I was speaking to the night elf. The elf. If if you were the elf, what would he sound like? He'd he'd sound like um. No, I'm not not gonna lie, but no, I I don't I, I don't sound like. Right, That's this so is what the elf wrong at the same time. It's amazing. I was doing Brighton. It just so happens the elf is Irish. <laughs> he stands up and looks at you. What the bloody hell are you doing? Rolling down the stairs and knocking me onto the floor. What's that all about? Oh, um, just hold on a second. I need to go dry my flute out. (laughs) And I just push straight past him over to the napkins that are conveniently placed in the... Whoa, stop, stop. What you want to do with your flute is entirely your own business, but I don't want to be here when you do anything with it as long as you throw those napkins away after. Now, are you coming for some moonshine or not? 
Hell yeah. I'm not talking to you. I was talking to the red-headed barbarian. You and your flute right now are in me bad books. I would love some moonshine, yes. Fantastic. Come over here. The white-haired elf walks over to the corner and points at a barrel. Now, I can promise you this is the finest moonshine in the cellar, but I've got to get out of here rather sharpish. So you give me ten gold coins, and I'll sell you this barrel right here. Um... Got to make your decision quickly. I've got to be gone. You know, time is of the essence. The sun's in the sky. It's night time. I never buy anything without a taste first. Right, well, in that case, you've wasted me time, and I'm going to have to get some of the boys from up above to sort you out, because I don't like me time being wasted. I grab his neck. Roll a d20. <laughs> Wish you had ripped his arm off now. <laughs> oh, I got a nat 20! A natural 20. We the... genuinely did. 13. Describe the grab of the neck, Rage. You reach out. This little elf, this little white-haired Irish elf, is trying to sell you a barrel. He might not even have the rights to sell this barrel. You don't know what's in it. He's pushing you to make a sale, and you have sensed there's something wrong. So you naturally reach out and grab his throat. Describe how well that goes. <laughs> Trust me, it goes well. I snap my hand over his neck, tightening my fingertips just a little bit, because mm. I still want him to be able to breathe, but I still want him to be constricted. Mm -hmm. And I pull him towards me and I say, listen here, you white-haired nelf. <laughs> you better give me a taste of this moonshine because I am not parting with a single piece of gold from my pouch until I do. He's coughing back. About it. <laughs> safety word. Safety word. <laughs> apples. 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 Safety what? word. His face is going red. You can see he's struggling to breathe. You can see he really needs to breathe, and he is trying as hard as he can to say the safety word. Are you going to let him go, or are you going to keep squeezing that neck? Brother Callum, what do you think while this is going on? I mean, you're just over-drying your flute on some napkins. Yeah, I'd say snap his neck. Because if he brings the boys down here, we've got issues. Oh, yeah. Do you right. say that out loud? Yeah, yeah, I'm just <laughs> casually just, you know, just drying my flute in the corner. <laughs> And I'm, I'm just. If you've just joined us, it's a literal flute. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> he, there was a. It's a whole thing. Just go back and watch the vod. Yeah, I'm just polishing my flute in the corner, and oh I'm like, God. I'm thinking it, thinking out loud. You know, I'm, I'm taking it apart at this point. I'm just doing the flick thing where you try to get water <laughs> out of like a bottle, like at him. Um, and, you know, shame. 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 And, um, shame. Are you shaming people with your flute? I am. <laughs> Never flute, flute shame. Oh no. <laughs> Snap his neck, the elf bad mouthed my flute. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Right, so you've been given advice, Rage. Callum thinks you should snap this dude's neck before he brings the boys down, brings the pain. What are you going to do? I'm going to show some mercy and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let go of him. But as I let go of him, I'm just going to give him a kick towards the moonshine okay. and say, give us some. And then I hold out an empty pouch. I see. Empty. Like, like you want him to fill the pouch full of moonshine? Yes. Oh, like That's it's what... a watery pouch. Yeah. You kick him back. He's choking. <laughs> He's coughing. He looks at the pouch. He looks at the barrel. He looks at the pouch. He looks at the barrel. Okay. Okay. He slowly starts to open the lid of the barrel and he says, I'll need the pouch. I'll pa pass me the pouch over. I'll, I'll dip it in. Yep, there you go. He takes the pouch, he dips it in, and then he draws the strings tight across the pouch to make sure that you can't drink from it and passes it back. It's there. Trust me, it's there. He hands it back and then tries to slip past you quickly and run back up the stairs. How do you react? I stick my foot out to try and trip him up. Roll a d20. 13. Just step on his toe instead, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> With my, my big boots. <laughs> 16. The elf notices that you're trying to trick him up. He jumps over nimbly and starts to run up the steps. Callum, 
You've got a chance to grab him, but it's not a good chance. You can roll a d20 if you want to, but you will roll with a minus one disadvantage. Do you want to I'm... attempt to grab this elk before he runs up the stairs? I have a different plan. Oh, what's the plan? I'm going to, with what is left in my flute, spray it. I'm going to hit another D-sharp, and I'm going to try and spray the step in front of him and hope he slips. Okay, Mr. Water Flute Bender. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Roll a D20. See how well that goes. Oh, dear. Let's have a look. Ten. Eighteen. Oh, no. He looks over and notices that you're probably going to try some shenanigans, so nimbly jumps over the step in front of him and sprints up. At the top, you hear the cellar door close and slam down. You then hear the elf shout something in angry Irish, and lots of footsteps start to move around above you. You even hear solid, heavy things being placed on top of the trap door down to the cellar. And now it's dark. And this is where we begin our adventure. Trapped in a cellar by a white-haired elf who was trying to scam you out of something. You don't know what's in the actual barrel yet, but right now you are trapped. There's a lot of people above you, and not that much around you. Rage, what do you do? Are there any torches that I remember seeing? Roll a d20, Ooh. let's see how lucky you are at finding something. Five. <laughs> Five. You are pretty sure you're in a cellar. Brilliant. That's pretty much the extent of your knowledge right now. There are... There are a couple Great. of shelves around the place, some boxes, some barrels, some pots. You think you can see a sink in the corner, but none of the plumbing above it is attached to it. There's metal pipes going down the wall. You think you see what used to be a window, but it may have been filled in with dirt and sod and earth from the outside. It's quite damp down here. It's quite sticky. And... Most of the walls are just solid soil and mud, but there are a couple of stones stuck into them every now and again. You see what looks like it used to be a tunnel, but has now been bricked up quite solid. Brother Callum, what would you like to try and do? Well, first of all, Rage, I did say you should have snapped his neck. This, this whole thing would not have happened if you'd have snapped his neck. But, like, he was an innocent. Well, he's not now. Well, true, <laughs> but... I don't go around snapping people's necks, mate. Well, maybe you should start to. Maybe you should stop squirting your flute juice over people. <laughs> and then we could have got somewhere. Huh? Look, let's let's just assess the situation here. So, bad news, we're stuck in a cellar. Good news, mm -hmm. it's a cellar. <laughs> There's alcohol. True. <laughs> um, Do you have your matchsticks? Or would that be a bad idea to set a fire? We have been playing the game for 30 minutes, and you are already planning on burning down a tavern. Well, well, we, well I'm... Hmm. I wasn't thinking of burning down a tavern. I was thinking of some new magic tricks I could pull off with my flute, flammable liquid and a match in front of it. But uh, we don't have the Have you have just invented a fantasy flamethrower? <laughs> Essentially, yes. I'll allow it. <laughs> so, if I, do I still have my matches? Roll the d20. Oh, bugger. Um, let's go. I definitely do not. Uh, it's three. Oh. three. oh, no. You yeah. have them, but they are soaking wet. They are unfortunately covered in beer that was dripping from the end of your flute while you were attempting to clean it off. You've got a couple of matches left, but they are wet. You would need to find a way to dry them first or look around this cellar. And as you are discussing, you are hearing more and more footsteps heading into the pub above you. If you look up, you can see the wooden slats and every now and again, a little bit of light peeping through. There are far more feet than there were before. You can hear muffled voices, a couple of cobwebs in the corner. You're effectively under the floor. And as you look up, you realise that every now and again, people are looking down at you. And you can oh, hear no. metal on metal. You can hear leather belts being tightened. You can hear furniture being moved away and around, almost to leave the centre of the room open. Oh, dear. Rage. Do you think... Yes? What do you want to do? 
when I talk to your Brother Callum. You, you... <laughs> not not my name, but continue. <laughs> what? You've, had, you've had a drink, I'll allow it. Yeah, tipsy barbarian. Um, <clears throat> do you think that they know that we're in here and that they're after us, or are they after the? <laughs> what sort of a question is that? Do they know we're in here? here? All I did was strangle an elf, and then you tried to spit water through your flute at him. They might not know we're here. I, I, okay, I have a plan. And Are they going to come down and your plan is going to be, ooh, I've, I'm looking for the same people you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We could hide in the barrels. We could drink the moonshine. I've got a better idea. We could do that. In fact, that could help with the plan, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking I play an empowering flute song for you to, to give <laughs> okay. you strength to burst through that door and hopefully send them flying with it. Okay. Cal, yeah. you're going to bang out a quick eye of the tiger on the flute to inspire rage to take on a whole bar. Is that the plan? I was thinking more sound of silence, but yeah, that could work. <laughs> sound of si from the really slow start. No, Is the disturbed that version. Brilliant. So we're just going to yeah. really quickly, you know, smash out a quick, uh, a quick rock ballad on the flute. Yeah. And Rage, you're going to try and burst up through. Yeah. Is that our plan? Is that what we're going with? Yeah. I, I just, I pull out my flute. I go uh, swiggity swoot. Play the flute. Turn this <laughs> barbarian into a brute, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. Swig. <laughs> hang it in mad bars in the cellar. Swiggity swoot. Play the flute. Make the barbarian into a brute. Right, swiggity swoop, play the flute is now your thing. I accept, you know what, fine. We, yeah, people in the chat are like, that's a banging limerick. Plus, whatever you're about to... Let's... Okay, you get your next roll with advantage, which yes. means roll 2d20s and pick the highest. Roll 2d20s right now, pick the highest, let's work out how inspired rage is. Okay. Good news, I can roll 2d20s. Oh, two 19s. Two 19s. Yeah. Rage. One's how, right on Rage's face. How inspired are you feeling right now? I'm feeling incredibly inspired right now. The, the, the bars, the flute, I'm ready to go. I've had some moonshine. You know what that is? That's, you played the flute so well, some local dogs heard it and just went absolutely crazy. Perfect. Yeah, they're fine. That's the effect I have. Some local dogs heard it, went absolutely mental with that. Right, you ready for this rage? I am. You walk up the steps. You make very sure to avoid the slippy one that Cal made slippy earlier. And you need to burst through the cellar. The door is still closed. You can see there's something heavy on top of it. Maybe it's a chair. Maybe it's another person. Who knows? Are you ready to burst out of this cellar? Yes. You are inspired. Roll 2d20s, pick the highest. Let's work out how well this explosion from the cellar goes. 19 and a 12. Is the white-haired elf standing on top of the cellar door? I don't know, is he? Can you see a white hair through the through the floorboards? Or do you think it's not a white hair? Mm, I think it is. You think a long it is? white hair. Fantastic. It was the elf that's been trying to scam you. You get ready. You pull up. It's Swiggity Swoot. He's played the flute. You burst out. You run forward. You place your hands, your shoulder. You push up with all the force you can muster. The elf is completely unaware. He thinks he's just stepped on a springboard. He gets launched into the ceiling, smashes into the timber beams above him, and then falls down, landing hard on the floor. You sprint up after springing him out the way and stand there. Have you got your weapon? Oh, I left it at the bottom of the stairs. You I'll bring it up. Is, <laughs> okay. is, you, you run up. You stand there, looking aggressive. Hands out. You hold your hand back down the steps. And you just see a hammer being placed into it. And you lift it up, ready to fight. You look around the bar. Who do I see? On the floor in front of you, you see a small elven child. Oh, you see the furniture has been pushed to the side. In the centre of the bar, a table 
with a cake and eight candles lit. You look down at the small elven child. You see a thin, thin slither of blood begin to run from the face across the floor. You look around at the bar and you see adults standing, horrified. You see children, speechless. One child just gently weeping. And you see the barman staring at you in shock as the banner, Happy Eighth Birthday Timmy, loosens from one side and begins to flutter down to the floor. Callum, you haven't seen any of this yet. No. So, what kind of entrance do you do? Um, how, how can I pick knowing what I actually know and knowing what I shouldn't know? No, um, all you know is that an elf, a white-haired elf, tried to trick you. Your barbarian friend has run up, smashed the elf that she thought was the elf, out of the way, into the rafters, onto the floor, and is standing ready to fight a bar. What do you do? I, I jump up out of the cellar and I'm like, ha ha gotcha, fucker. <laughs> Roll a d20. Shit, it's a five. You run up. You pass the hammer. You, st you run out, up the steps, look around, look down at the little white-haired elf and just go, ha <laughs> ha fucker. Then you realise where you are. Yikes. Then you realise that you haven't really read the room that well. And that... This is the are you fucking sorry version of smacking an elf out of the way. You look around and you realise that the bartender is getting a little bit angry. Someone's just come in. I'm kind of new. What is this podcast about? Don't try, don't try and follow it. Honest, the best advice if you've just joined, let's go back to the start. Because every episode will be a one-shot D&D &D game that will not go the way you think it will go. The adults around are all tall, svelte elves, and all of them begin to draw thin silver blades, short swords carried by all. You think maybe there's about 13 people around? 13 children, but the children have backed away behind the adults. The bartender has reached under the bar and has dragged out a massive mace. On the end of the mace is a white rag that you would normally use to clean beer glasses in fantasy taverns that he hasn't quite managed to unhook from the end yet. So you can tell he's still a bartender. Rage, what are you going to do? I want to look at this child who I see bleeding in front of me and I want to check for a pulse. <laughs> are you medic... Are you medically trained? I was one of the quiet members of my barbarian guild, so yes, I studied in in uh, A and E or whatever you call it. Roll A and E. Right, you studied in A and E, barbarian A and E. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more aggressive than the human version, like the regular civilization. But I mean, it will do in the okay. circumstance. Roll a d twenty. And let's see how much you know about this tiny boy's elven physiology and his potential life. Is it not called A and E? Um, I got an eleven. An eleven. Mm -hmm. You are aware this is an elven child. You are aware that he's bleeding from the nose, but only because he smashed his face when he fell down <laughs> onto the floor. <clears throat> he's not dead. He's in pain. He's sobbing. He's terrified of you. But he's not dead. Oh, good. Would you like to say or do anything with this information? I look up to the elves in front of me and I want to say... I will hold my hand up as if I'm friendly. I'm so sorry, I say. You're not going to go like, surprise! <laughs> Callum, right? 
Okay, <laughs> Cal, quick, save this. How do we do it? We've got a lot of very angry elvish parents looking at you. You've crashed an eight-year-old's birthday party. How do we get out of this? We need some bardic beauty. What do we do? Yeah. So I, I slide no, across the floor on my knees. I say, guys, I'm here with the entertainment party. And I start playing happy birthday on the flute. <laughs> Roll a d20. Yeah, five. A five. Did you at any point while you were down in the cellar attempt to put anything alcoholic into the flute? No, I was trying to get it out. But there is alcohol in the flute still. It's still dripping a bit, yeah. Brilliant, because what happens is the knee slide is fantastic. You run in, you burst in, you slide across the floor, you pull out the flute, you get ready for a beautiful solo, you begin to play. You cover every hole except one on the flute, and a little bit of beer just splurts straight up. It catches the lantern above you, and it just... <laughs> across. Now, it's a straw-thatched roof. So this is not going to take long. You don't get a chance to say that you're the entertainment. You just <laughs> slide on your knees, blow the flute, and immediately... They, they don't even know what happened. They think you're like some kind of really extravagant wizard. You blow the flute, immediately the ceiling catches fire because of the fumes left from the alcohol. The elves begin to panic. They look around. They're not sure what to do. They grab their children and they try and run out of the room. But they begin to slip on the beer that was sprayed everywhere earlier. And the, the doorway. There's too many people trying to get through it. The fumes. The heat. It's beginning to... It's intensifying. Rage, what do you do? <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> to you. Rage launches into an emotional, barbarian happy birthday. But barbarian happy birthday songs are a little bit different, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Like, they don't say happy birthday, dear, and then the person's name. Why don't you tell us what other traditions the barbarians have? <laughs> um, we sing it in, like, a, a really <clears throat> metal version of happy birthday. And it sounds quite grumbly, aggressive, and very scary. So there's a lot of growling going on. So from the eyes of this little elven child, he was standing <laughs> quite nicely, having people sing happy birthday to him, got launched into the air, smacked the rafters, cracked his face into the ground, began bleeding, had some barbarian pick him up and manhandle him to check he was okay, saw a bard slide across the floor and the roof burst into flames and then you just start to growl and scream at him mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. he's, he's you know what this guy is going to grow up to be the big bad evil guy you have this is the inception this is actually the origin story of an evil elven prince oh no cow you've just set the roof on fire you've just seen rage screaming at this tiny elven child you yeah. may not be able to get out of this tavern via the main door because there are too many people no. trying to push through it what are you going to do? I'm going to do some sort of cross between ballet and parkour straight through the window. <laughs> Roll a d20. Okay. Six, is that 16 or 7? Seven? 7. Seven. <laughs> yeah, I can just about make it a tiny number. You see an open window. Are you... Sh well, you've committed now. You attempt to combine ballet and parkour as you try and jump through the window. The ballet part is a lovely pirouette and then a lovely single extended leg as you attempt to leap out. The parkour is the fact that you ran a little bit too fast and slipped a little bit. The window is perfectly open, but what ends up happening is the jump isn't quite far enough. So your extended leg makes it out. The leg that's trailing doesn't quite. And your crotch and the window ledge crunch together. Mm. You hear a snap. You hear a pop. You feel a wave of pain. The world goes white for a second and then you feel yourself slide and fall backwards back into the bar. All you yes. can see is the orange glow of the on-fire ceiling as 
You can't quite describe the pain in your crotch right now, but ballet parkour is definitely not your specialty. Yeah. The elvish the... child finally finds a little bit of bravery and pushes away from you, Rage, and then runs toward the door, but realises it's packed. There are too many people trying to get out, too many things, and the fire is starting to slowly creep down from the ceiling, down the door frame, and some of the elves are starting to get a little bit charred. It's getting a bit sweaty, and it's actually starting to burn some of their skin that is still inside. The reality might be some people die in this bar. So the small child runs toward the window that you were attempting to leave from, Callum, and leaps out successfully. Rage, what are you going to do? I am going to go back down into the cellar because there is a barrel of moonshine which is not alcoholic, right? Sure, is let's it? go let, let's go with that. Yeah. Okay, let's, great. Let's assume that moonshine is not <laughs> alcoholic right now. Might be. It could be non-alcoholic version. Yeah, because elves and fantasy taverns are known for supplying non-alcoholic moonshine. Yeah, it's it's 2022. Alcoholic and non-alcoholic. So I grab the barrel, <clears throat> okay? I lift it up, and I take it back upstairs, and I set it down, and I'm going to, like, I'm going to get as much of the water as possible onto the roof. So if I can lift it up and throw the water up onto the roof, that's what I want to attempt to do. You know when a DM asks, are you sure? I'm not going to stop you doing it, I'm just insinuating you might not want to. So, are you sure you want to throw this barrel of moonshine onto the roof, which is currently on fire, in a bar packed with elves? You don't have to say yes, you have to say no. Do what your heart tells you to do. Yes. Roll I'm going D to commit. Roll a d20. Eighteen. It's a beautiful throw. It's perfect. You tip the barrel sideways, you grab both the edges of it, you lean forward and you rip it up. You feel your shoulder muscles tensing, you get the biceps, you feel the core, you throw it. The barrel explodes when it hits the roof. Liquid everywhere. Extremely flammable alcoholic liquid. And the moment all you said is it non alcoholic, I didn't say yes. You've just napalmed the end. Yeah! No, you have yeah I said it's non alcoholic, you said yes! No, you said I said let's go with that. It might not be. <laughs> you have effectively found the way to make the world's biggest, most violent Molotov cocktail. It rains inside, it rains fire, it rains lava. And at that moment, little Timmy, the eight-year-old elf, peeks back in through the window <laughs> to see how his birthday party is going, to check on his mum and dad, the bartender, his old friend. And what he sees is his birthday party melting. He sees his mum and dad as their faces slide off their skulls onto the floor, bubbling. He sees and hears the splintering of bones through the extreme heat. He sees his friends that he played with at elvish school cry, but the tears evaporate the moment they come out. He sees their eyes boil in their head as he watches the slow drip of this moonshine napalm onto everyone he's ever known or loved. And he feels so much anger and hatred toward you two, it's effectively nothing to him anymore as he turns and walks off into the distance, trying to process this. Callum, Rage, you've got to get out of this room quickly or you're going to join their fate. What are we going to do? Callum, quick, make a choice. I, I quickly get up off the floor holding my crotch. Qu quick help, I've snapped my flute. <laughs> and I just fall head first through the window. I push Callum's butt out. 
as I try and like shimmy him into this hole. So hang on, Cal stands up. You you're holding <laughs> your crotch and you try and get out the window. And Rage, you're going to push him as some you know support. Yes. Rage, roll a d20. See how well that push goes. A twenty. Twenty. Oh. It you just launch him like a <laughs> shot put straight out the window. Cal, you, you don't even feel your feet leave the floor. You're flying. That's what you are. You stand up, you hold your crotch, you feel a hand on your butt, and then you're like, whoa, out the window we go. You actually, it's almost like life happens in slow motion to you. You actually fly past Timmy. Timmy looks to the side as he goes to look back for one final look into this burning bar, one final look at his parents, at his friends, and instead, what he sees, completely sideways, is a bard with a flute in his mouth, with beer dripping from it, holding his crotch, flying past him, side, almost like <laughs> rubbing salt in a wound. You are very arrogant with this. And Rage, how are you leaving? I'm just going to carefully pull myself up and out very elegantly and by the time you are out you hear the splintering of timber you hear the crackling of wood and the exploding of bottles of alcohol behind the bar as you turn and see the tavern collapse in on itself trapping the birthday party trapping the families trapping the parents and around you nowhere to be seen little Timmy who knows what will become of him? As you are lying on the dirt, the sodden earth outside, next to Callum, still holding his crotch and writhing on the floor with a flute in his mouth, you hear some local townsfolk running over in a big gaggle with buckets of water. They run over, they look at the burning tavern, they look at you and they simply say, What happened? The, um, the the birthday cake candles were far too big and not up to fire safety regulations, may I add. Oh, yeah, that fire safety regulations guy really needs to be um, blamed for this. Yeah. Yeah, I think his name's Donnie or something. Yeah. Pretty sure. Donnie's my cousin. Donnie? <clears throat> did you check this? An absolutely gigantic man steps forward. Clearly a blacksmith. Huge leather apron, stained with years of sparks. Muscles on his muscles. Veins pumping all around. Twice the height of an average man. Three times the girth. He simply looks down. No. I do not know what you speak of. I checked those candles. They were safe, what happened? Um. Apparently not. Um, <laughs> as you can see here, building in just a big crumbled pile on the floor. So, um. <laughs> could anyone have changed the candles out before little Timmy went in? A sort of sabotage maneuver? <laughs> Roll a d20. <laughs> oh, shit. Um. <laughs> Are you effectively saying, did your eight-year-old have any enemies that would want to kill him? Yeah, pretty much, uh, and th that was 15. Ooh. Timmy's family are well known across the land. There are many people who would want him and his parents dead. They have built many orphanages. They have supplied food and grain to many hungry, they have gone against the rule of a tyrannical king. There are many who would see their kind and generous souls wiped off this earth. Do you believe that they have been assassinated? Um, for a small price, we'll, uh, we'll find out for you. Yeah, we can investigate this. The man okay. walks over to you and extends 
an arm so muscular you'd swear he has abs on his forearm. He shakes your hand, Callum. Mm -hmm. Find who did this and oh. tell me. Don't worry, I will. I'm, I'm just as annoyed as you are, clearly. Mm -hmm. Rage, what do you feel? You're going to start working for this massive blacksmith, hunting down the killers. Mm. I uh, I reach behind me and grab my hammer, which I managed to get through the very tiny window, um, and I walk up to this brute, slam the hammer on my shoulder, square up to him, and say, Yes! We will find the murderers who did this. We will make them pay. A lot. The blacksmith, but not as much as you. The blacksmith smiles. As you know, I am Donin. I will check in on your progress every now and again. I have a messenger network who will send me updates of how your search goes. Until then, I will try and find any... any heirlooms that still exist inside the tavern. He begins to weep. And before he can say anything else, he turns around and starts to throw the buckets of water onto the tavern. They're trying to put the fire out, and they're trying to go inside. It's only a matter of time before they realise that they're missing a single small elvish child's body inside the tavern. You should probably skedaddle before that's discovered. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say the evidence has all been burnt, but it hasn't. There is There's one piece timmy. of evidence that will actually pin this on you. Timmy. Oh, no. Right. Who you've been hired to find. Yes. Yeah. By Donin, who apparently is some kind of kingpin blacksmith. Someone's just pointed out in chat that Timmy in this situation is effectively Batman. <laughs> yeah. You guys right now are Joe Chill. You guys have just... <laughs> You might not be the good guys here. I mean, intent matters. Yeah. Is that and what you're going to say in court? didn't intend to murder an entire city of elves. No, you've, you're not a city. You've just burnt down a tavern with the, an eight-year-old's birthday party in it. Oh, I don't feel so bad then. Oh, no, the, the city's fine. It's just the tavern and the party. Oh, cool. So th is there another pub nearby? <laughs> Round two? Round two, I... Let's go, pup crawl. Round two, um, let's find a seven-year-old's birthday party. Why not, you know? Yeah. Two for two. Callum, did you happen to see which direction Timmy was running? Um, well, I say I... this quite quietly as well. Yeah, well, I, I flew past him out the window when you just launched me. So oh. basically the way I'm facing is where he went. You are lying on the ground, kind of like paint me like one of your French girls style. Yeah. You've been very relaxed, even while talking to the blacksmith. You, you didn't even get up to shake his hand. You just kind of held no. your arm out. One hand on the crotch, one on... Yeah, well, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we should head in that, that direction then. Get this, yeah. get this little thing and silence him. I agree. <gasps> Wait! What about the other white-haired guy? Elf, dude. You didn't see him. He may not be involved with this. Oh. Well, he could. He could. He may pop up later in an episode in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes an example adventure. Now, what we're going to go for with these D&D sessions is they're not necessarily a campaign. It's not necessarily going to be you have to have watched episode 1, 2, 3 or 4. The next adventure may not continue directly from this point. It may continue a few days or a few weeks or even a month or two in. It may be a completely different village. It may be a castle. It may be inside, maybe outside. All the information we will get from you. Consider it an episodic Dungeons & Dragons style adventure. You can miss any amount of of episodes and if you just sit down and watch one it will still make sense to you we could even start as someone has just suggested in chat 
in 10 years time where little Timmy has just turned 18 oh. and maybe in charge. Who oh, knows? Yeah. We have started building a world. So you guys may see that in the bottom right hand corner of my specific screen, I have forest and castle on a little wheel. I can spin that wheel whenever I want to. I'm going to replace forest and castle with a huge variety of enemies. And every time we bump into an enemy, I will spin the wheel of enemies. And if you aren't happy with the enemy, we can probably use some channel points to redeem it and spin it again. So our party will always be facing difficulty. They'll always be facing puzzles and enemies. Callum, how was that for you? It was my dream. This is what all I've ever wanted to do. Just flute my way out of every problem. Excellent. You get to use the power of the flute... You've used the, the water flute. You've used the beer flute. You've used the mm. fire flute. Yeah. If What we can do, like your flute will gain elemental style damage. Doot doot uh, magic flute, as someone just put it. Oh. What was it you said earlier? The uh, Swiggity swoot will play the flute. Swiggity swoot, play the flute. That's what we need. And Rage, how has this been for you? It's It's... It's been horrific, to tell you the truth, Josh. You've absolutely framed me. You you had me believe that I was throwing some non-alcoholic moonshine over the fire to try and save the day, and then just went, heck you. Right. No. You, you went down to this mm -mm. cellar to mm. buy some moonshine from a white-haired elf. What made you think it was non-alcoholic? Because... You're in a there fantasy be... cellar. Exactly. And I, there's a fantasy cellar could have non-alcoholic alcohol. Why would it? Why wouldn't it? Because it's moonshine. It's, <laughs> it's designed to be the highest possible alcohol content. People wouldn't in the chat saying would... they loved it. it was I, I did vividly describe an elvish birthday party as they melted from the napalm style heat. Was that too much? I don't think that was too much. I think it that wasn't was, enough. I don't think it was. <laughs> I think everyone else kind of just got to observe, observe it from afar. Whereas I sat here knowing full well I caused that. You did. And you did. you feel melted. Terrible. You melted. Actually, not if this was my fault. Actually, Actually no. It was. Yeah, <laughs> no. I did set the roof on fire to begin with. That <laughs> was did. my fault. I did say I, my barbarian has two brain cells, so. Maybe she thought that moonshine wasn't flammable. Maybe she did. Maybe she wanted to kill the children. Just, I don't know! Just so everyone in the chat is on board with this, when I describe violence, when I describe confrontation, I will go into extreme amounts of detail. Okay? I want to make it... Because violence shouldn't necessarily be glorified. It should be horrific. It should be horrible. A lot of kind of Hollywood stuff and video games make it so violence is beautiful. I want the violence. I want you to feel bad that you've done it. It's not going to be you know describing lovely, beautiful fighting around. It's going to be putting a toothpick under your big toenail and kicking a wall kind of violence. It's going to be yeah. See when you kind of go oh that is the description that we need. I'm not going to make the violence nice. I'm going to make the violence very, very bad. If you choose to do it, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be gory. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the first episode. We need to change the name from Britical Role to something else because I, I feel that Matthew Mercer would get angry. Yeah, it was good as a meme. Yeah, any yeah. suggestions in chat? Now, the way that I would be looking at it, this is kind of like episodic D&D. &D. Um, so almost every session is session zero. So we thought about calling the group Session Zero. We've mm -hmm. thought about Role Britannia instead of Rule Britannia, seeing as we're all British anyway. Episodic Role, Second Monitor Role. I think Session Zero is a cool name for it because that's pretty much yeah. what we're doing every time. You can join in at any bit. Yeah. Role, Role Britannia is a good idea. but we want I, li your... I like both of those. Yeah. Role Britannia and Session Zero are yeah. both really good ones. We I like want... Session Zero. That's very clever yeah. on like... Playing, playing on words of, of Dungeons and Dragons. I like it. Yeah. Second roll could be a good one. We want... Second roll. We want you guys to join in with our silly, horrific adventures. Billy, I know that you're in the chat right now. Billy, would this adventure have gone differently if you were involved? Not necessarily better, but differently. <laughs> no, not She's more better. like the mum. 
So I feel like she would have stopped the burning of the children at least. <laughs> what a great, what a great <laughs> sentence to say. If Billy, were, if our sorcerers were here, we wouldn't have burnt as many children. How can you think you're the good guys when you say something like that? Maybe we're not the good guys. Like you're Maybe literally that's saying, why we need Billy. if we'd have had a wizard, we'd have prevented war crimes. That's what a horrific thing to discuss. Fantastic. Right. I want to do a session like this every Wednesday. Cal, are you up for doing Wednesday one shots? I am absolutely up for Wednesday one shots. I didn't even realise that was alliteration, but That's I like it. That's a good it. name as well. <laughs> the Wednesday one shots. Rage, how are you up for doing session zero Wednesday one shots? Yes. Session zero Wednesday one shots. God, that's a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister. Yes. It's good, though. I mean, Wednesday one shots is a cool idea, but I think as far as a group, we should just call the group in general something like session zero. Maybe not Elvish child burners. <laughs> it's, it's accurate. I'm a fire starter, elvish fire starter. Elvish fire starter. <laughs> Billy, what do you think we should do? Billy's in the chat right now. Wednesday is perfect. Wednesday will happen. Mondays, Callum, it's you and me with the Tangent Tavern stream where we have guests okay. on to talk about YouTube stuff. Wednesdays mm -hmm. is One Shot D and D with uh, whatever we end up calling ourselves. Oh, by the way, guys, if you came to Insomnia, the Insomnia 68, the gaming fest in Birmingham, you would have seen us perform D&D &D Live. If you're coming to Insomnia 69, which is on in, what, four months' time? Yes. Yeah. Here's a little secret for all of you. We want to take this live D&D &D show, this live improv D&D &D show, to as many conventions as we possibly can. So not just Insomnia. We want to take it to as many conventions as we can and mm -hmm. play D&D &D Live in front of all of you, with you, guys. That'd be great. Carl, do you have any final thoughts to wrap up this session before we head off? Uh, not specifically, no. I think it went really well. I love the idea of it. Uh, I can't wait to do more. Mm -hmm. Rage, how do you feel it went? Amazing. I, I, I love it. I think that now that we're going to... Now that we've decided on a name, mm -hmm. like solidify it, concrete it, session zero, I think it's going to be great. Um, as we want to take this to many different places, if there's a convention near you that's a specific favorite of yours, shout about it as much as possible on your social media, at the convention uh, organizers saying that you want Session Zero to do a live show at you, whether that be MCM Manchester, London, Wales Comic Con, Telford, anything like that, shout as much as you can. And uh, yeah, we'll get session zero there. Hashtag we'll probably look into zero. we'll look into getting like a YouTube channel for it. We'll get a Twitch handle for it yeah. or a Twitter handle for mm -hmm. it. We will try and put as much social media. I mean, this is just the start. We'll try and get as much social media as we can. The ultimate goal is to be an improv D and D group that travel around from geeky place to geeky place and just get involved with all of you guys. So, thank you very much for joining us. It's been absolutely lovely. I'm going to have a chat with these two lovely people right now about the future of this, but it's been yes. great. Thank you very much for your time. Good night and God bless. Yep, thank you on my stream as well. <laughs>